we will now talk about non measurable sets. So, recall how did we construct the Lebesgue measure? We had P, which is consisting of all uh, finite unions of the uh, half closed intervals, and then we constructed a ring out of it. This is just these intervals. Ring is finite unions of such intervals. On this, we had a measure mu. And then we went to the hereditary sigma ring, which is H of R, which is nothing but the power set of the real line. Okay, and then we had the uh, mu star measurable sets, which is nothing but the Lebesgue measurable sets, and then we had the Borel measurable sets, which are here. Okay, I, I gave you a indirect argument using a cardinality that this is a strict inclusion and then we will see in the next chapter a specific example of a set. So, now we want to show that this is also a strict inclusion namely there exist subsets of R which do not which are not Lebesgue measurable. So, that is what we want to do. So, before we do that, so let us take x and y in 0 1 and you define x some y modulo 1. So, this is addition modulo 1. So, this is x plus y if x plus y is less than 1 and then it is x plus y minus 1 if x plus y is greater than or equal to 1. So, that the answer will come back into the closed semi closed open interval 0 1. So, if E is a subset of 0 1, then we and if Y belongs to 0 1, we write E plus Y is equal to set of all X plus Y X is in E. Okay, so now we have the following lemma which is based on the translation invariance of the Lebesgue measure. So, E contained in 0, 1 and Y belongs to 0, 1. If E is measurable, always remember when I say measurable, I mean Lebesgue measurable, then so is E plus Y and m1 of e plus y is the same as m1 of e. Okay, so proof. So, we set e1, it is e intersection uh, 0, 1 minus y and e2 is equal to E intersection 1 minus one minus y to one. Okay. Then E one and E two are obviously measurable, and because of this intersection they are disjoint and therefore m1 of e is nothing but m1 of e1 plus m1 of e2 because e equals e1 union e2. Now, by definition, we have uh, E1 plus Y is the same as E1 plus Y because you are only adding up to 1 minus Y and any element plus 1 minus Y that will be strictly less than 1. Okay, And then similarly E2 plus Y is nothing but E2 plus Y minus Y minus 1. And these are just translation invariants. So, M1 of E1 plus Y
So this implies that EI plus Y are measurable I equals 1, 2 and you also have M1 of E1 plus Y, uh, EI plus Y sorry equals M1 of EI I equals 1 comma 2. Okay. Now <coughs> EI plus Y are disjoint. If not, there exists A B in 0 1 such that A plus uh, y equals b plus y minus 1 and this implies that mod of b minus a equal to 1 which is uh, not possible because a and b are strictly less than 1. Okay, so then therefore you have e plus y equals e1 plus y union e2 plus y and this is a disjoint union and therefore e plus y is measurable and m1 of e plus y is the sum of these two and we know that is equal to m1 of e1 plus m2 of e m, sorry m1 of e2 and that is equal to m1 of e. Okay, so this proves the lemma. Okay. So now if x, y belong to 0, 1, we say that x is related to y if x minus y is rational. So if we say that then it say that this is rational. So clearly tilde is an equivalence relation. Okay. So 0, 1 gets partitioned into equivalence classes. Okay, so P equals a set containing exactly one representative from each equivalence class. So you have 0, 1 gets partitioned, that means a disjoint union of equivalence classes take one representative from each equivalence class. So obviously this is based on the axiom of choice. When you have such a thing that you can find such a set is precisely the statement of the axiom of choice. So we have two, you use, use two properties so far, one is the translation invariance of the Lebesgue measure and the other is the axiom of choice. Okay, so now proposition P contained in 0, 1 defined above is not measurable, not Lebesgue measurable, so proof. So you said R not equal to 0 and Ri numbering of rationals in 0, 1. It is a countable set so you can number it only I put R not equal to 0. So I said Pi equals P plus Ri. Okay. So then P naught is the same as P because it is 0 and if X belongs to PI intersection PJ where I is not equal to J, okay, then X equals <coughs> P1 plus 
R1 Ri Pi plus Ri equals Pj plus Rj. P1 and P2. Yeah, yeah, that will be Pi. Okay. Pi and Pj. So, if Pi equal to Pj, then Ri is not equal to Rj and therefore, this equality implies that mod of Ri minus Rj equal to 1 and that is not possible. It is a contradiction. So, this means Pi is not equal to Pj. But then Pi plus Ri equals Pj plus Rj, this implies that Pi is equivalent to Pj, again not possible because these are, uh, they are distinct elements from distinct equivalence classes and therefore, this is also not possible, okay. So, so we get that if I not equal to J, Pi intersection Pj has to be empty. Now, because P has one element from each equivalence class and we have taken the numbering of all the rationals, therefore, we have that union P i, i equals 0 to infinity is in fact equal to 0 1. So, if P is measurable, M1 of 0, 1, this is equal to 1, which is equal to sigma. Uh, so, each P i is measurable by the uh, previous lemma. So, this equal to i equals 0 to infinity, mu, uh, M1 of P i, which is equal to sigma, i equals 0 to infinity, M1 of P i. It is a constant sequence. So, if this has to converge, then either all of them have to be 0. So, so this will be equal to plus infinity if m1 p is positive and 0 if m1 p is equal to 0. Okay. So, the either infinity or 0, it cannot be equal to 1. Therefore, this is not possible and therefore, you have that p is not measurable. So, we have explicitly constructed a subset of 0, 1 which is not measurable. Okay. So, now let E be contained in P, E measurable and you said E i equal to E plus R i and then you have that M 1 of E i equals m1 of e for all i and e i mutually destroyed by the same argument. Now, you have that sigma, so union e i is contained in 0, 1 and therefore, you have sigma m1 of e i is strictly is, a, is less than or equal to 1. Okay. And this is equal to m1 of e for all i and therefore, this is possible only if m1 of e equal to 0. So, only measurable subsets of p are subsets of measure 0. Same true for any p i which is equal to p plus 
all right okay so say they it will also have only this now let a be contained in 0 1 measurable and m1 of a is strictly positive Now you said E i equals A intersection P i. If E i is measurable, this implies that M1 of E i is 0. Because E i is a subset of P i and we have seen the only measurable subsets of P or any P i are only sets of measure 0. And so if all E i are measurable, then A equals sigma, <coughs> sorry, union E i and therefore 0 less than m1 of A, which is less than equal to sigma m1 of E i, i equals 1 to infinity, but that is 0. Okay, so you have another contradiction. Therefore, there exists at least one i such that a intersection p i equal to e i is not measurable. So, implies a uh, has a non measurable subset. Now you can do this in any interval. So you can, can repeat all this in n n plus 1. Okay, and therefore if A is contained in R, M1 of A is positive. This implies A intersection n n plus 1 has to be has positive measure for at least 1 n. And implies a has a subset which is not measurable. Okay, so every subset of R uh, of positive measure has a non measurable subset. So there are plenty of non measurable subsets, uh, and therefore you have the strict inclusion. So again, let me recall for you. So you have P the set of all intervals and then you have r the ring and then you have uh, the power set of the real line which is the hereditary sigma ring and then you have l1 which is lebesgue measurable and then you have b1 this is the carotheodry construction so we have shown that this is not true and this also is strictly thing this we will reinforce with a specific example later on right now Okay, so with this I will conclude this chapter on the Lebesgue measure. So before proceeding further, we will do some exercises next time.